is. I want you to look. Look down this street. You see how long it is down there? Now look across the street. Now look right here. There's nobody standing at any of these spots except for the exact spot that I need to be filming at right here. Literally. It happens almost every time. All right, so I'm going to get uh, Trey to reenact both parts. Hey, straight across. You're too far out. Just straight down the sidewalk. Okay, get ready. Exactly. All right, go ahead. So the guy turns, the guy stops you, you come this way. All right, that's one. And we did it. <laughs> okay, and then the other one, you're there and there and you look. I was right here. No, he was on the front. Yep, just leaning straight back. No, straight. Yep. He walks by, and then you look. All right. Go. Not fast enough. No, I need to move. Oh, that came through. Yep. That was the motion, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, but fast. Because he walks by and then you're going to look. Yeah, you tell me Go. All right. Yes, he sees Elvis walk across. And then he goes like that. Gotcha. And then Elvis comes this way because the guys are stopping him. So he, the idea is the guys are trying to stop him, so this guy's going to catch him trying to get away. Yeah. All right, so let's do yours. So, of course, Yeah, we got it. So friends, another scene from King Creole happened right here. You'll see those windows. You'll see this school. This tree was not here. Look at how big that tree is now. It was not here during this scene. But Elvis is standing somewhere like right here. The taxi pulls up. He opens the door and lets Yvonne DiCarlo from the uh, Adams family out. And it happened right here. You can see these gates, this exact gate. And I want you to notice that it had points on it in the movie. They're gone. Look at this stuff. All this stuff has been rubbed down and torn off. The tree has grown up. The, uh, where that door is at was a window. So they've added a door right there. A lot of things have changed. Something that is in the movie is this flagpole. That flagpole is in the movie, but look at how rusty it is now. So this is exactly the spot right here that it happened. Now, in the movie, the concrete right here was more square. You can see they've broken it up and poured new concrete. So it's a little different. But this is absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the spot. Now, I want to show you something interesting. Is in the movie, you don't realize how close together things are. So let's look down here. This is St. Philip Street going this way. It's Royal Street going that way. That lime green balcony down there is where he sang crawfish. Right there is where he did the scene where he let Yvonne DiCarlo out of the car. And right there is the fight scene where he tried to escape the guys all that close together, just like that. So now you know, all right here. Dad jokes in New Orleans. Hey man. That dude right there is Pistol Pete's brother Ronnie. I 
Oh yeah, yeah. So Pistol Pete's brother Ronnie works right there at Harry's Corner, and we're at the corner of Chartres and Dumain. That's pretty cool. All right, so friends, we're. This is the square. This is where you said for us to come. What's it called? Jackson Square. Jackson Square. So I wanted to point out that this photo of Elvis on his way to be inducted in the army happened less than one month after this movie was wrapped. So when you're seeing photos of him here and watching him in this movie, he's thinking about being inducted in the military and his life is about to change. I believe this photo was taken to the left of where I was standing right then in Jackson Square. I'll show you a photograph in just a moment. We're going to zoom in. I believe he was standing on the other side of that fence right there signing autographs. Also, this photograph was taken in that park and you can see the church in the background. And they have all kinds of evil stuff down here tarot card reading and all that oh. stuff that I am adamantly against because the Bible's adamantly against it. But they also have artists and people like this getting their pictures made. He's been outside. I think he's already that color, brother. See this church? One of the scenes from King Creole happened by this church. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. So show me the picture. It may be too dark. You see those. You see those. So we're going to go check it out. And as I mentioned earlier, we were not even here to film these sites. We were here to film another story and decided to take some time to do this, so we ran out of time. Where this arrow is pointing is where this scene right here happened. Next time, we'll reenact the scene and do the whole nine yards. We've got to go back at some point and get up on the balcony. It's this alley right here, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's this alley right here. So beside the church off the square, you see this down the middle. This is how you can find it. Those arches are down at the end down there. And he came around that corner right there. Right yeah. There. yeah. I knew I was in the area. You're right. It's right beside the church. I, didn't, I said that, didn't I? I said, where's that church? Yeah. Yeah, and you still have that sign there. The, the arrow in front of us. On the, on the uh, car door. Yeah. Let me get down there and we'll get in the shade where we see that. All right. So we're going to do some research, friends. It happened right here. We're going to do some research and figure out. And you see the little drain down the middle. Stay tuned. So friends, let me show you something. That's Elvis in King Creole. He runs down this alley and somebody pops out down there at the end and scares him. Go. Trey's going to reenact it. They pop out. He goes the other way. That's this scene. Now check this out. You see him right there? Now look at this right here. Still here. Just like that. This place is called Tony Seville's Pirate Alley Cafe. Pirate's Alley. The old absent house. And you see that there's a church right here. That's Jackson Square down there. You go to Jackson Square, you go to where the church is, walk down the left-hand side of it, and you'll be able to see right here where this scene happened at, right here, literally in this alley. Right there. Need to go. So it'll be, it's going to be 0.5 more miles. All right, we better go back to yeah, our truck and, ride and drive. I think the most important is let's get back. What's this dude doing? I don't know. He's got a typewriter and he's in the middle of the road.
Somebody had a guitar accident. Those crazy dogs with the crazy eyes. Did you see that guitar accident? Yeah. Skateboarding, eating pizza. Living the life. Well, we need a skateboard and some pizza. Living the life. Hello. Hi. So friends, another way that you could get to that alley that we were just at with the pirate thing is straight down Royal, which is where all the other stuff was. And just when you get down here and you see the church and you're on the other side of it, turn left and that's the alley. You'll see those arches on the right. Those arches are actually on Royal. So friends, that is Canal Street, right down there, the famous Canal Street. You can see they still have trolley cars here. This is St. Charles. And the story is that, that uh, Elvis and June were driving and they were, they were still back in uh, Biloxi. And they heard on the radio a DJ saying that he wanted to interview June because it was talk that they were gonna get married. So he said, okay, well, if they want to interview you, let's go give them an interview. So they drove straight from Biloxi to here, went to St. Charles Hotel, went up into the mezzanine, and actually he called them to find out what the address was and came here and kept going around the block. You can see this is a one-way street going this way. And he kept going around the block trying to find somewhere to park, couldn't find anywhere to park, and finally just said, heck it which is a call back to Adam the Woo, my buddy, and parked right here and just double parked and went in and did an interview. So we're going to go in and see if we can go upstairs and see where it happened at in the mezzanine. Stay tuned. Sadly, friends, this was not the actual St. Charles Hotel. This is where it was, where that tall building is at on St. Charles. On the other side of the street further down is the spot of this original St. Charles Hotel. This is what it looked like. You can imagine Elvis double parking out front. That's where it happened at, not at the new St. Charles Hotel. This building sadly was demolished in 1974 and we did not know it till now. Another piece gone. So in the mezzanine here, which is the second floor part that you see above the entrance right there, just below the American flag, is where the radio show was. I found the actual interview from that day, from that radio show, and I'm going to play it for you right now. Check this out. I've been getting some pretty bad publicity lately, especially after the Milton Burrow show. I got quite a bit of bad publicity with my actions on the stage out there, but... Uh... Well, I'll tell you one thing, Elvis Presley. Uh... We have 50,000 watts, and they're very strong here in the New Orleans area, and you'll never hear anything uh, other than Elvis Presley is a very fine person here. And I can speak in behalf of Larry Monroe and Hal Murray and uh, Jim Edwards on the night train and Mickey Scott and all the personnel here who have talked with you. We have been uh, playing your records for a long time. Well, thank you very much. I've been listening to your, uh, to, your, to your station for the past couple of days ever since I've been down here. And uh, I can say that, and uh, I certainly appreciate it a lot because uh, uh, if if there wasn't somebody on my side, I'd I'd, I'd be lost. <laughs> you know. Well, I find I have a, a little um, little note here. Ellery Wagner is the new president for the New Orleans fan club for Elvis Presley. I take it. Uh, have you met? Is it a young man? Is it Ellery? Oh, it's a girl. I see. Uh, have you met uh, Miss Wagner? I don't believe I have. Uh, if I did, it was a long time ago, and I forgot it. Back when I, you know, I was in New Orleans when I first started out in the business. Oh, you were in New Orleans? Yes, I was at the Punch of Train Beach. And uh, <clears throat> that's back when I first started out. And I've, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been around quite a bit since then. I've met so many people until it's hard to remember. Well, I heard the Democratic Party is trying to buy, uh, buy the uh, Elvis 
Presley block of votes. <laughs> That's what I hear. Well, I'm, I'm afraid that the big, the the the, uh, the biggest part of them would be kind of too young to vote. You know? <laughs> well, I want to ask you one other thing. I was reading uh, one of the trade magazines. Uh, you made the statement, uh, whether or not you made it or not, we'll find out, uh, that I want to make it while I'm hot. Uh, in reference to a, I mentioned earlier, this jockey who said he would pay you a dollar a minute uh, for every minute you, he interviewed you on the air. And I, Elvis, don't, please don't hold me to that because I had to sell the station. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the most untrue rumors I've heard yet. I've never, I've, I've never even, in, in fact, it's the first time I've ever even thought of anything like that when you mentioned it. But well, I think it's a good idea, so. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people that, that possibly don't like you, you know? And uh, there are a number of people who don't like me, and uh, probably Bob Hope right down the line, but what you do, you do well. So uh, I don't know why people, it's uh, just a, a certain amount of integrity that should go with this, like these quotes here and there that you read about you, now that you yeah. say there's no truth to them. Mr. Stewart, I'll, I'll tell you like this. Uh, I was telling the reporter a little earlier today, uh, there's people, regardless of who you are and what you do, there's going to be people that don't like you. There were people that didn't like Jesus Christ. They, they killed him, and Jesus Christ was a perfect man, you know. And uh, there's going to be people that don't like you regardless of who you are and what you do because if everybody thought the same way, they'd be driving the same car, they'd be marrying the same woman, and that wouldn't work out. You know? That's right. There's a lot of philosophy there. Very, very much so. Well, uh, how about your new release? I've got a million calls. I know that Mickey and Larry Monroe and Hal Murray and Jim Edwards have all received the same call. Why don't you play Hound Dog? And uh, we can't find it. <laughs> well, I, it's probably because I hadn't made it yet. <laughs> uh, Hound Dog uh, should be out in the next three or four weeks. Now, I'm not sure, but uh, uh, I've got it to record yet. But I mean, after you record it, it'll take them just a week or two to get it out. Elvis, do you think there's any chance that you might uh, send us an exclusive on it? I'll see if I can. I'll see if I get my manager to send you a one of the first copies that comes oh, out. Oh, we'd appreciate that, and we'll play it to the old dog's tongues hanging. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, do you write most of the lyrics for your tunes? Uh, no, I, I, I've never written a song. Never I've, written a song. I've never written a song. Well, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I was like some of my uh, rivals, Carl Perkins and Gene Benson. Those guys, they're, they're pretty good songwriters, but me, I, I did good to get out of high school, you know. <laughs> and, well, uh, I've never was... written a song. Well, you don't need, you just keep singing. But uh, tell me one thing else. How long do you plan to be in Biloxi? Are you going back to Biloxi now? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to uh, to uh, Miami, Florida. Miami, Florida? Yes. Sir. Are you booked down there? No, I'm, I'm on vacation. I, I'm off for about three weeks. It's the first vacation I've had since I've been in the business. I see. I've, I've been in the business about 43 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Energy he uses, eating sugar, take box candy, take half box candy. What does that mean? Oh, sugar, eight, half box, oh, Elvis, did you eat up that box of candy I gave you? <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, one piece. Well, it was it was very good candy. <laughs> I, I, I saw the price tag on the bottom of it, you know, 98 cents, but. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I stole it. <laughs> no, it, 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 was, it, it, it was very good candy. I didn't know who it belonged to, it was just sitting in front of him and I was eating it. I see. Well, uh, <laughs> you're sitting in front of him. Well, I'd like to play an Elvis uh, Presley tune here. Uh, Who? Gene Vincent? Gene Vincent. <laughs> this boy is coming on. But, uh, I met Gene in New York. I, uh, uh, I met him last week. He was in the train station up there. I was, I was going to New York, I mean, from New York to Memphis. And Gene Vincent was in the train station. And, uh, I didn't know who he was. One of the boys in my band knew him. And I walked over and introduced myself to him, and uh, it's the first time I had ever seen him, or, or he had seen me on shows, but he had never, you know, I had never met him. And uh, I told him, I, I said, Gene, I said, congratulations on your record. I said, you really got a hit. And right immediately, he, the first thing he said was, well, I wasn't trying to copy you, he said. <laughs> he said, I wasn't trying to sound like you. I mean, just right off of the bat, he said that, so without even being asked. Yeah. And uh, I told him, I said, oh, I know that. I said, that's just your natural style. <laughs> But uh, but the boy has got out a, a, a very good record. And I mean, I have people ask me all the time what I think about these people that that, that sound a lot like me. I mean, uh, well, uh, I was 
I was the first one to come out with it, I reckon, is, is best I, uh, is, as far as I can remember. But uh, uh, those people that are, are, uh, that are using the style, I, I don't blame them. I'd probably jump on the bandwagon too, you know. Cool. Well, one last question. Uh, how long do you think that uh, rock and roll will last now? Well, do you think that it's... Well, I wish I knew. That's a question that if I, if, if I could answer, I'd be making plans for the future, but I don't know. I'll say this. It's, it, it's, it's very hot now, and I like it. I enjoy rock and roll. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. But uh, as long as it lasts, as long as it sells, I'll continue doing it, as long as that's what the people want. And if they change, if it dies out, I'll try to do something else. And if that doesn't work, I'll just say, well, I had my day. So, friends, there is the Superdome. A lot of you saw that in the Katrina stuff when this place was flooded. Where we're at right now was underwater. And I worked in the Superdome uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend before Katrina. Just a few months, we sold over 50 hot tubs in the Superdome. It's also famous for... We just call him PP. <laughs> My favorite basketball player, other than Michael Jordan, Pistol Pete Maravich, played here in New Orleans for the Jazz in the 1970s and against the New York Knicks one night in this arena that we're about to drive by. He scored 68 points without the three point line and he fouled out with three and a half minutes left in the game. And it happened right there. So it was a special place for me. I mean, that's pretty good if you're a beginning basketball player. I mean, when I was playing basketball, I hit 100% of all my shots. <laughs> I thought everybody was supposed to. Mercedes-Benz, super dome, super. And cut. This is a weird monument right here. I guess they're doing all kinds of monuments now. Hmm. In June's book, they talk about they were at St. Charles and Canal and they left and they went down and they saw a cemetery that had very unusual graves. And Gladys said, I want to go see those Turn graves, son. City Park Avenue. So he then turned around right Train Boulevard. and went back. Use the left lane to make a U-turn at Bottinelli Place. And went up into the cemetery. She asked him to drive through it. So they pulled up in here. And we believe that it is this one. And it's established in 1841. She said in the uh, book that there was graves here from back even in the Civil War. And Elvis thought that this was kind of morbid. And his mother said, Gladys said, I don't want to be buried under the ground. I want to be buried in something like this one right here, I would speculate. Something above the ground like that. And he said, oh, mama, don't talk like that. Uh, I've got a lot of living to do. And so do you. And so do you. And Vernon said uh, something like, was it Vernon that said something along the lines of, you know, everybody lives and dies and it's just some part of... No, uh, Gladys said that. Oh, it was Gladys. Okay, so Gladys said everybody lives and dies. It's just part of living, son. It's just part of living, son. And less than two years later, friends, she had passed away. Now, what really blows my mind is he had the opportunity to put her in the uh, same uh, uh, mausoleum that he was in but he chose to bury her, even though she said, according to June, she said she did not want to be put under the ground. This, we believe, is the spot. This is straight up. It's not the first cemetery that you get to. It's the second cemetery on the left, but it's the first cemetery that has these kinds of above ground uh, uh, burial plots. And the reason they do this is because the water table is so high. So uh, the graves won't float away and that kind of stuff. They do it like this, which is, is very unusual. But believe, we believe that this is the one that they drove through right here. And this is on Canal Street. If you head on Canal Street and you start driving southwest towards Metairie, 
this is the only, this is the first cemetery that you get to that has these kinds of graves. And also in the book, it said that he couldn't turn in. He had to go down and turn around and come back, which you saw that we had to turn around and come back as well. So we believe this is the one, and this is definitely, they also mentioned there was Civil War graves. This is definitely old enough to have Civil War graves in it. So we believe that this is the one, friends. So we believe it happened right here, friends, and they probably turned, and Elvis would go out this side gate because he didn't like being in here. And they went to eat at a restaurant. And they went to eat. So where's that restaurant at? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So friends, this is down in the French Quarter and they, this area down here is where Elvis and Gladys and Vernon and um, June 8, they said that he walked up the steps, which there would have probably been steps here, and came over up on the levee, which we're up on the levee. It stood out and looked at the water. And told June how thankful he was for everything and how well everything was going in his life. That would have been right out here on this levee. Now, where, we don't know. but it's right in here was where he was at. And of course, in 60 years, it changed quite a bit. But this was the area right here. And they ate in that area right there, which has, of course, changed a lot too. And then we've got a dude here on the boat with the megaphone. Looks like a captain or Tennille. So this right here, friends, is what they call the French market, this whole area. So she said that they walked up steps to the levee, which would be here. Now what I want you to see is how high this water is. This is interesting. You see where the water's at right there? Now look over here at where the city's at. The water that water level right there is 10 foot high down there if that water got in there. Trey and I went to New Orleans and searched out some of these Elvis sites and the things in June's book. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Tightened up and went to New Orleans. So make sure when you're watching the Weekly Spa Guy, you subscribe. You give me a big thumbs up if you like the video and watch the weekly Spa Guy, friends. Thank you.